Hello and welcome to Meet the Materials, Season 1, Episode 2. Today we're going to meet metal wrap threads. Um, I'm Hannah Perna Wilson and I have with me today a guest, Irene Posh, who is somewhat of an expert on these threads. Uh, she's embroidered uh, a computer with them. So, what is the special thing about metal wrap threads? Well, um, within the world of e-textiles, um, there are various conductive threads, um, but metal wrap threads are known for their often high conductivity um, and quite visually metallic properties. Um, and they're made by wrapping a thin metal wire, such as the one that you can see here. It's, it's been flattened, so it's kind of wider uh, than it is thick. This one here is it's kind of a bronze. Bring it into focus. It's like a flattened uh, wire, basically, often also called metal strip. Yeah. And that's that's probably the oldest material in this uh, in the category of metal threads that has been uh, processed through textile techniques. Actually, early early mentionings of uh, embroidery and weaving with uh, flattened metal wire date back to the Old Testament, so quite old for that matter. Mm -hmm. And so this thread would be wrapped around the core because this metal by itself is not very strong. I can pull it and it will break quite easily. So to sew or to weave or to um, knit this, it might uh, break from the wear and tear. But if it is wrapped around a core such as uh, cotton spun fibers, uh, synthetic nylon spun fibers or silk, um, can make it tens tensely, can give it a lot of tensile strength. So here you see the end of one of these so maybe first I show you, these are three different single wrapped, two copper and one silver around um, synthetic cores. And it's like a single metal band wrapped around a single textile core, what, mm -hmm. we're, what we're looking here at here now. So it's a very thin thread and it's still a very fragile thread because uh, uh, you can tear the, the metal band quite easily and then also obviously the connect the electronic connection would be broken. The electric connection would be non-conductive anymore. So this is actually something you want to avoid when you want to when you want to use these threads for electronic purposes. This is why most of the times a thread that consists of multiples of these individual threads spun together like for example in this material, the high flex uh, material from Carl Grimm, which is composed of seven times uh, a thread, a single thread spun together into this material. This uh, produces a quite thin but very strong material that you can even use in an embroidery machine. Uh, you probably would even be more afraid that it wears down the embroidery machine than the embroidery machine wearing down the thread. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go even one more step, this is then that high flex seven times uh, wound, wound together five of them. So you end up with five times seven, 35 individual strands of. So actually, a lot of metal wound around um, thin threads. Um, and in turn resulting in very conductive material. Quite thick material though too. And so most of the materials we've discussed now, like these copper uh, threads, the individual ones are from Carl Grimm. Now we want to briefly go over some more historic materials. For example, this one, um, like a, a cordonet or schnürchen that we, that we used in the embroidered computer, as Hannah mentioned before, you can see it's a very textured thread, again, multiple strands wound together. You can see that here the core textile is not white, but yellow. And also if you look closely, you should be able to see 
that the coloring, the golden color you see on the outside is actually only applied on one side of the metal band. So you would see that on the inside it is not visible to the eye. The metal band is actually silverish. Mm -hmm. It's probably for, for some economic reasons that they did not color both sides. And then we have another very similar one given to us by a friend. More where we see similarly a yellow mm -hmm. core. Yeah, if I remember correctly, he said that's from a, an old tapestry workshop. And um, the difference is, even though it's all metal threads uh, or metal strips wound around the textile core, there might still be differences in how conductive the material actually is. So, if you want to use the material for uh, e-textile purposes, you should always have this in mind and check this, mm -hmm. like the actual resistance, for example, over a meter or whatever length of material you need. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've uh, covered singular threads, spun together threads. Uh, we now here have uh, mm, singular threads, but with the, with the metal band very loosely wound around the textile core. So in this example, you see the black textile core um, heavily shining through, or even like becoming a, a visual element of the material you're looking at. It's like a gold and black thread. It's not a exclusively gold thread anymore. Or even here, second example from that's from a Belgium company called Barton Francis. Quite thick yellowish core with a rather sparsely wound around metal, golden metal thread. But here another example. Here it's less obvious, but you if you look closely, you would all see the black textile core and then the silver band wound around the material. Mm -hmm. This is the central one in the microscopic image right now. Yeah, and so in the other direction too, you can get threads where the metal has been run, wrapped even more tightly uh, around the core. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you here uh, again a sort of um, um, antique example um, that I found in a, in a textile shop. Uh, you see here the red core, and then you see, especially under the microscope, you should be able to see that the copper is actually wound very tightly around the thread. So you mm -hmm. hardly see the you hardly see the space in between the individual yeah. copper bands, and it's also flat. Interestingly, it's not a it's not a round. Mm -hmm. um, here you can see under the microscope the comparison between the lower one that's more shiny and as you mentioned, the flat. Um, this more tightly wound one, and then above it is the one we showed in the beginning, the Carl Grimm single strand wrapped around a nylon mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, you can also not just wind them together or spun them together, but like weave them together into into small bands that you can then again use for for embroidery or applied decorations. You have here. A uh, total of three different colors, even like purple, uh, blue, and pink. Um, two of them sort of uh, braided together, and this is more a uh, loose spinning together situation. And also, here you see again how the color is only applied on the outside. or even these uh, flat lids mm -hmm. material. I expect this also to be from Calgrim. It's like several, many of um, individual threads, but um, woven together into a, in a, into a flat uh, band. And I believe under a microscope, you can also see that it's actually not all the same color. It's not all silverish. Exactly. Um, you see some blackened um, parts, and these are oxidized. So our hands are nicely coated in oily, uh, salty, moistness. Um, and every time we touch these materials when we're handling them, um, causes them to 
get onto the material and corrode uh, the metal. Yeah. Uh, which in the worst case, if it manages to completely corrode the metal, there uh, be a loss of uh, continuity of the conductive metal. And I'm showing you here again another example of uh, the use of uh, metal threads here um, as bobbin lays made into bobbin. And this is maybe also a nice gateway into other examples what you can do with this uh, threads. Mm -hmm. um, so here I have a sample of a woven fabric uh, that's also been embellished with some uh, embroidery. Um, if we look under the microscope, you can see that, I'm not sure if it's the warp or the weft, but um, one of them, it's always a metal-wrapped silver thread. And in the other direction, it's this green, um, like in silk material. And then on top of that, if we look, we can see it's also been embroidered over with more metallic threads. Um, and this is a kind of a silk organza fabric, and um, the metal properties of the weave give it this kind of bouncy, um, different kind of drape to it. So it's not, yeah, historically these conductive metal materials weren't necessarily used for their electrical conductive properties, but rather for their um, appearance and kind of handling. Yeah, and they have, as, as briefly mentioned before, they have been used for hundreds of years, um, obviously mainly for decorative reasons. That's, that, and that's actually one of, the, one of the things that really fascinates me about these threads, that you can find so many documentations of crafts that deal with these threads across diverse cultures, of how they in the past, and some of them even nowadays, um, handle these materials. And I, embroidery definitely is a big, big part of, of where metal threads are used. So we're showing you now some embroideries. And actually the main material we see here, for example, in the embroidery I'm showing you right now, and also in the one Hannah is showing you, is uh, it's a metal thread that maybe isn't a metal thread by strict definition, because we sort of miss the thread part of the metal thread, and only have um, the, the wrapping part. So we have here the bouillon, or French wire, which uh, basically is like a, a very small spring. It's like a hollow um, pipe wound off uh, of wire or of metal wire or or metal strips. And this is this is what you see in this embroidery. This is what you see in in elements like this. And this is also, for example, what you see in this embroidery, which is a brooch that I recently bought. Um, uh, made of colored metal thread, uh, colored bouillon, and then here another um, curled wire on the outside as well, if you look very closely. Um, so I think we s wanted to talk about conductivity of these materials mm -hmm. as well. So as briefly mentioned already, um, they're obviously quite conductive because they contain uh, metal, copper, sometimes even silver or gold. But of course, it depends on how much metal they contain uh, yeah. in order to be more or less conductive. So if you take this singular... Um, uh, if, we, if we compare, for example, the Barton Francis, this single metal wrapped around the black core, um, and compared to the Carl Grimm High Flex copper, um, which you can see now under the microscope and also in the camera, um, we measured 4 ohm for 1 meter for the color M1, yes, mm -hmm. and, and this one was around 8 ohm per meter, which might not sound a lot, but it might actually make a difference depending on what uh, mm -hmm. application you're using the thread for. Also really important, um, whereas in the last episode you saw like a change with resistance when things are stretched, this is not happening here. We have always 4 ohm no matter how, how far it stretch it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So quite important difference. Yeah, yeah but in terms of behavior, these metal wrap threads compare a lot to classic electrical wires in terms of their resistance, um, but they're more f flexible um, than... They um, do, wires. and this is actually also why they have used, uh, exactly. why they have been used as wires very, yeah. early, on, very early on when they, the wires were not that um, ubiquitous, yeah. the available and used, so at the beginning of electricity they actually used uh, these metal threads that they knew how to produce for ornamental reasons for 
conductive reasons as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like, jump forward to nowadays, what we also see often nowadays is metal threads that look like metal threads but aren't actually conductive. Um, shiny materials sort of became popular again, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> so you actually find a lot of fashion accessories um, with metal threads, though most of the time they're not actually, they don't actually contain metal, but they contain lyrics instead. So they're mimicking the visual effect without the material properties, so without actually being conductive. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe Hannah is having a microscope, the comparison of the... Exactly, so now you see two strips of a flat metal wire, except one of them is not real metal. So the top one is the one we showed you at the very beginning, um, which is real metal, and the one below it is taken from this um, knit hat um, and is a is lurex plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to see visually the difference, but there are some other ways that you can get to know. Uh, yeah, for example, you can um, like if you happen to go in a shop and want to buy a uh, metal thread material, you can touch them if you're allowed to, to see, to feel their temperature, because if it's real metal, it would be cold. You would feel that. Also, metal would behave differently in how, it, how it's breaking, how it's tearing apart than plastic. Also, it would behave different in how it's uh, keeping shape and form once it's, uh, it's bent. So these are some indications of for you to to decide or to to detect whether it's plastic or metal. Of mm -hmm. course, you can also come with a multimeter and test the conductivity of of any given material in a shop. Um, which also gives, leads us to the question where to actually find these materials. Mm -hmm. So some of the materials here are actually bought from a place called Kalgrim who is producing uh, Leonische Waren, which means uh, Leonic accessories. Mm -hmm. um, descri Le Leonish uh, describing um, metal threads not made out of pure gold or silver, but more less, uh, less uh, exquisite me metals instead. So Calgrim has a big portfolio of metal threads and what they're producing uh, from these metal threads. And they will sell you these in bulk. Like you will have to buy at least one kilo of mm -hmm. this material, just to give you some perspective, this is a quarter of a kilo. One kilo would cost you around 90 euros, I believe, depending on the current price for copper on the world market. Mm -hmm. um, so whereas this is uh, comparably cheap, but you have to get a lot, of, you have to buy a lot of it. When you go to some specialized shops um, that specialize in metal embroidery, there is a few of them around the world. You will get small quantities, but for much more money will be much more expensive. So we, for this embroidered computer project, we actually bought this material in a shop that was catering these gold embroidery materials to, to the emperor's house uh, hundreds of years ago, and is still catering those materials to some traditional um, cloth, maker, cloth making um, uh, businesses. Or we have here the material from Bart and Francis, Belgium reseller. Um, and you can also go on the flea market to hunt for mm -hmm. for new materials. See see what you discover here, which is actually how we discovered quite a few of those materials that we've been showing you today. Yeah, it's definitely a fun part of the e-textile e practice of this hunting and gathering materials that you then use in your work. Yeah, I think that was a really Nice overview. It was an overview. I think we touched a lot of things. Obviously, you can go much more in depth, but mm -hmm. that's maybe for another time. But uh, yeah, you met metal wrapped threads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. And uh, we say goodbye. Thank you. Until next time.